DoraCountyDailyNews.com and the radio stations. We're here at Dora County Medical Center on the heels of a trip to Honduras for these two gentlemen in front of me, Andy Starr and Brian Stevens. And first of all, what brought you to Honduras? Uh, we, had a, we had a team of eight people. Um, I'm, Andy and I are both members of the Moravian Church. Uh, we're also both members of Rotary. And this trip was really a combination of both the church and Rotary uh, continuing to support the, a, a clinic down there in Honduras that the Moravian Church of North America started 75 years ago. And uh, one of our own, a local, Rick Nelson, has been a, a leader at that clinic for the last several years. And so Rick's been uh, working with the Moravian Church and with Rotary to raise some funds and, and get some projects done over the last few years. And this trip, in a way, was a, a culmination of those projects. And how many years in the making was this trip for you, or is this a trip that you tend to make on a yearly basis? Uh, they they do make it almost a yearly thing. Um, we you know there was a couple of gals that we were with uh, that had have been down to Honduras. I think this was a sixth trip down there, um, and the, this particular trip we really started talking about uh, with Rick last fall. Um, but at the same time, I guess. You know, he's been working on me as an individual to go down and, and, and do some mission work for probably almost a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, so the timing just happened to be right now and um, having some people that I'm familiar with to go down there uh, at the same time. Yeah, uh, same here. He's been asking for several years if, if I'd be interested in coming down. And it's always something that's kind of been in the back of my mind. And it just turned out to be good timing. Yeah. And what, what clicked this time? Was it was it just timing here here at Door County Medical Center, or was there something where he said, hey, you know what, this is just something I want to do? I I think, you know, for me, one of it is, part of it is that Rick, uh, as a missionary, is officially retiring. Um, I suspect that he'll still be very involved in the work down in Honduras, but officially he's retiring. So this is one of uh, I wondered if this would be one of the last chances to to get down there with him. And then, uh, you know, also as, as a Christian, um, I just felt like it was something I was being led to do. And I would agree. I mean, it, it really, um, Rick, knowing Rick for quite a while, he creates a lot of comfort around the idea of traveling to a country you've never been to. And, uh, you know, being having gone through the week now, I, you know, it has been very difficult to the logistics of it all without him there. Um, but it... You know, I would echo what Brian said. I mean, really, a lot of it comes down to just feeling called to, to serve. And um, I've been on some other mission trips in the U.S. And this, uh, as far as timing in my life and also just a, a strong feeling kind of all came together this, this time. So. And what was your specific role when you were, once you got to Honduras? Uh, we just, we jokingly said that we just did whatever Rick wanted us to do. Um, but Usually uh, a good way to operate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had kind of an idea going down. Um, as Brian had mentioned, we were um, kind of the last piece of a, of a grant that uh, Rotary, Rotary International had provided to the clinic. Um, and so there was some interior work, some painting that had to be finished up as part of that grant. And then also... Uh, some inspection and upgrade of their plumbing and water system. Water is a very scarce thing there. They go through a long uh, dry season and most of the plumbing is just like PVC type plumbing. It's not metal. So they had dug up all of the plumbing and ground on the property and we went around and just checked it for leaks. Replaced a lot of valves so that they could shut down different areas of, uh, of the clinic um, and really make it as efficient as possible. And the water system is really fascinating. They they rely on groundwater and that normally gets them through most of the year but there's a time in the in the dry season where the groundwater dries up and so what they have to do or what they've had to do in the past is literally send people with buckets and tanks down to a river miles and miles away to get fresh water and bring it back to the clinic so that they continue to perform operations and procedures and all the things that they do as a, as a full service hospital there and so what one of the things this project's trying to do is to give them a self-sufficient water supply throughout the year. So as Andy said, we worked on leaks and um, trying to conserve the groundwater as much as we could. But then towards the end of the week, we also got to help put up some tanks that will collect rainwater during the rainy season so that when the dry, 
um, the groundwater dries up, they can switch over then to the tanks for this water that's been waiting. So. Now, as people that simply can just turn on a faucet and get fresh water whenever they want, how big of an eye-opening experience was that for you? It's, I mean, it was, it was, it was eye-opening when we were there, but it was probably more eye-opening when I returned. We got in very, very late or early, depending on the way you look at it, on Monday morning. I woke up then about 11 o'clock on Monday and sun's pouring in through the windows and I turned on the hot water in the shower and just stood there under hot water for the first time in a week. And, you know, never before had, had I spent much time thinking about that. But when you're away from it and you're around people who struggle to, to get fresh water and don't get any hot water, um, yeah, you really see a difference. Yeah, it definitely uh, uh, alters your perspective on things. Um, you know, water is the, you know, one of the foundations of life really. and to think about, you know, having two or three months where, you know, you really would have to, uh, you know, travel a little ways or, uh, you know, be without water for a period of time. Um, that's that's a tough thing, especially when you have limited resources already. Uh, but coming back, I, I would, again, I'd, I'd kind of follow with what Brian said is that when I was down, when you're in the middle of it, you're just kind of, you're just doing it, you know, and you don't really, I mean, the water, for us, it gets us sick if we drink it because there's there's bacteria in it. Mm. Down there, they're they're used to that. But when I'm taking an ice cold shower and you're like keeping your mouth shut so you don't actually drink it or anything, uh, that was a that was something that when I got home and sat under the shower and you know just at my kitchen my bathroom sink got a glass of water and drank it. I was like, you know, this is awfully convenient. <laughs> and uh, you know, you do think about the fact that this isn't like this everywhere in the world yeah and andy you said that you've done mission work before brian have you done mission work before this experience i've done you know local and or regional mission work but never international okay it's new, new for me how did this experience really compare to those past mission trips well um the furthest i've been is over to new, uh, new york uh we we do uh some uh work with high school age kids um that that bus over there from the Moravian Church, uh, and we, we work in uh, what we call soup kitchens, uh, food banks, clothing banks, that kind of thing, um, and uh, some homeless shelters. That was a little, I mean, it, it, totally different experiences. I mean, you, you obviously have people in America that, that struggle too, um, but this was, uh, you know, it was one of the things that we first mentioned that, like, something that's completely out of your control, like where are you born? You know, and the fact of the matter is that if you're born in Aulis, Honduras, you're probably never leaving Aulis mm -hmm. because it's just, you just don't have the resources to try to broaden yourself enough to go to, you know, they have, you know, school through high school, but to, to be able to go then to a university or something, very, very unlikely. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when you're in New York and you're doing that work, those are those are needy folks too, but they probably didn't start out homeless, you know. So there's just, you know, there's different pieces to, to I think, anywhere you go and do mission work, whether it's in Sturgeon Bay, uh, helping feed people locally, or if it's Milwaukee or, you know, I, you've been over to Minneapolis or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when, you know, the Bible says that whatever we do for the least of these, we, we've done for Jesus Christ himself. Uh, the least of these takes on a whole different definition. You know, when you're in an area where, you know, the folks who live there, the, the, the Miskito people are to Honduras what the Native Americans are to the United States. But the difference is um, the the Honduran government has never embraced the Miskito people in any way, never given them anything. And so most of the folks that live in that area live outside of the cash economy. Uh, they, they, you know, grow stuff on their own property to try to support themselves and, and their family. So it's just a, it's a whole different level of poverty. And it's really touching to be able to uh, see a need and do what you can to, to try to address it. And, you know, obviously we couldn't address much. We couldn't, we couldn't do much, but uh, one of the more touching moments that, and my favorite picture that I took of the, of the whole week was uh, Andy and, and uh, Chris Olson and I had gone into to town 
And Chris, I believe, noticed uh, a mother and her two kids who we had met the day before. And here the mother we know had walked probably 30 minutes on dirt road without shoes. And Chris noticed that and mentioned it to Andy. And Andy immediately ran into the store, bought shoes for this woman and, and put them on her feet. And I have a picture of Andy putting the shoes on her feet. And uh, so just the, the ability to see a need like that and respond to it right away uh, is just a, a great privilege. Yeah, and the, you know, just the ability, you know, I don't think the, the things that we were able to do in one week were necessarily like life altering for, you know, people down there. But the fact of the matter is that we were able to do a number of little things that, that hopefully, you know, help somebody either in that day or, you know, for at least for a, a period of time. And the, on the bigger picture, I think that when you go and you serve in that way and for that length of time, it draws your attention to the need. And so we can come back now and really try to focus some energy on how can we provide, you know, some more financial assistance to the clinic so that they can, you know, further their mission on site. And can we specifically help being in healthcare, help get some, you know, other supplies down there to make uh, patient care a little bit better and a little bit easier for the doctors on site. Um, and, and, you know, I think that's probably where our focus will go now to help uh, with the sustainability of the of the clinic. And what kind of outreach have you done since you got back to make sure that you're that you're able to accomplish some of those goals? We haven't done much in the couple of days that we've been back, but we have plans to do uh, presentations to the Moravian Church, uh, to the local Rotary Club, and um, you know maybe some other areas as well. I imagine we'll do a presentation here at, at work also. Yeah. I think one you know one of the things we haven't talked about is the hospital itself down there, and so while you know, you're in this area where uh, on any given day, people are worried about where they're going to find clean water for their family. What are they going to do with the trash that's occurring in their house? Because there's no system for trash down there. Um, at the same time, you've got a hospital that's doing amputations and C-sections and amazing medical work on a daily basis and under the, the craziest of circumstances. And so it, it really would not take much of our resources to really help them in a big way. And so that's one of the things that we're definitely gonna be focused on is, is trying to raise some money uh, to, as Andy said, to get them some of the supplies, some of the equipment that they need uh, that would really be a game changer in, in their organization and the work that they do. And along the same lines with that is also the logistics of getting that equipment there. Um, you know, Rick has done a really good job in the past of getting supplies to the clinic. Um, but one of the big hangups is always um, once those supplies get to customs in Honduras, how quickly can they get moved through and, and then uh, transport by essentially by river or maybe by plane to the clinic? The customs uh, process there is a little bit different than, than what we're used to. Uh, so we'll do some investigation around that to see if there's any way we can help facilitate getting larger items like exam tables or other pieces of equipment um, through customs and get it to the clinic, uh, you know, in a shorter amount of time than six to eight months that is very typical for something to sit in customs right now. If the stars were to align again, would you go back? It's, I mean, it's early to say whether or not I'd hop on a, a plane tomorrow, but um, here's the thing. we, This community has supported this hospital for decades now, and uh, I've definitely believe that that needs to continue. And so uh, I, I would probably say, yeah, there will be a time when, when I'll go back down there. But what I really want to encourage people to do in our church and in the local Rotary Club is that we definitely need to continue as we sending teams down on, on a regular basis. Yeah, and I would say the same thing. I, I mean, um, if, if Rick called for some reason and said, you know, I really need some help, you know, I love Rick. I mean, I really will... Uh, follow him into the fire, so to speak. And, um, you know, if that was the case, sure, I, I'd be willing to go back down uh, as long as, you know, Brian says it's okay for me to leave work. Um, but the the fact of the matter is, is that it's probably, you know, if it was an annual thing or even an every other year thing, um, for me, I would certainly go back. Um, you know, and, and I also, you know, always is, is just one little spot in the world. You know, I, it, it, a goal for me personally is to be able to help continue to support AWIS, um, but also, um, you know, if there's 
our church has, has started to do some work with uh, St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands. Um, you know, the Caribbean as a whole has been devastated by hurricanes over the last 12, 18 months. And um, there's plenty of other opportunities, too. So um, I, I wouldn't say that I would be just focused on always. I would I would hope that I could uh, do more than just just that. And I was saying that everybody can make it to Honduras once, let alone multiple times. Uh, what are maybe some of the things that we can do locally to help out this clinic? I think one of the main things right now is, is raising money. Um, and we, we do have a fund set up at the Sturgeon Bay Moravian Church. So if any of your listeners are, are inclined to give, um, it, it's just amazing when you look at an average office visit at their clinic costs about a dollar and a half. And so, you know, if you think what you could do with $50, you know, and, and being able to pay for 30 people to see a physician that day, uh, that's, that's an amazing investment. Um, they have an infant feeding program that goes out into remote villages and feeds kids their only good meal of the day. And that program costs their clinic about $1,000 a month. So for a donation of $1,000, feed kids in remote villages in Honduras for, for a whole month. Um, those are the types of things that I think we need to be raising money for right now. And that's something that's uh, relatively easy for us to do and makes a huge impact. And, I, you know, other than uh, direct giving that way, too, I, I think we would be, um, it would be a mistake not to mention the, the world of, um, the Board of World Mission, uh, which is a division kind of of the Moravian Church. Uh, they, they raise funds and help operate a number of clinics like this around the world. Uh, they donate a significant um, amount of money to the Awas Clinic. So mm -hmm. um, if you didn't want to... Um, specifically give to the Moravian Church or whatever through our fund, uh, the B Board of the World Mission is another way that you could give money uh, to the clinic too and just earmark it for them. But, um, you know, the money that, that we collect here, we know exactly where it's going to go, um, you know, and, and through Rick it'll be used uh, specifically for the things that we earmark it for. And, you know, the infant feeding program down there is just a I think of all the things that we did, it was probably one of the most emotional pieces of the of the week that we were there where, um, you know, you get 20, 30 kids um, who come and really, um, for the most part, they're pretty happy kids, even though they're getting one real meal a day um, and their parents are doing pretty much everything they can to get them there. Uh, like Brian said, you know, there was a woman we met at the market that we helped get some shoes for. She was at, you know, she was at an off-site spot that they were serving lunch that took us 30 minutes by tractor to get to. Um, so she had walked that distance easily the next day. I mean, some people walk two or three hours with, you know, holding on onto their kids the whole time to get to get there. So that's a very worthwhile uh, spot to put, your, to put your money, certainly. And then la last question, obviously, when you have an experience like this, when you go on a trip like this and you have people like me or other people in the community asking you about it yet do you have that go-to story where it kind of captures that entire trip that entire experience in a nutshell uh other than brian getting sick uh no i it, no it you know i think having seen that picture you know that brian took i think that for me kind of encapsulates uh a lot of that because i mean whether it was us checking water lines for leaks or was us scooping some meals up for for kids or painting or or whatever it was that we were doing at a specific moment um it's really about helping people and it's about doing you know work of jesus christ and there, I, I don't know if there was one thing over another that really struck me um knowing that there were a couple babies born i think during the week yeah. we were down there kind of means a lot you know um I think one of, in fact, one of the babies that was born, um, the mom asked some of our team members, would you take this baby back to the United States? Now, obviously we can't do that, but you know, that's, that's symbolic of kind of the, the, the level of, um, poverty and, and lack of hope that they have, uh, that some of the folks have down there, that they'd be willing to give up their own child to, to strangers to, in hopes of a better life for that child. This was the scale's first child, and you know one of our the little ladies that were 
visiting with with them that's what they asked and I mean that I couldn't agree more having had heard that story I was just like my goodness yeah. you know that just very powerful the other image that sticks out in my mind is they start every morning with devotions at uh, at seven o'clock mm -hmm. I think and so there we were every morning uh, singing hymns listening to scripture read in a language that we couldn't understand uh, but when they would sing the song holy 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 we all knew that that's the song that they were singing and we could all kind of hum it along and so you know here we are we live worlds apart uh, but we're worshiping the same god and in a lot of ways we have the same purpose at least for Andy and i who come to work at a healthcare organization every day mm -hmm. you know we have the same purpose every day as these folks that, that do in honduras and uh, that's to further the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. And so it was a great opportunity to do that. Yep. Ryan Stevens, Andy Starr from Door County Medical Center in the Sturgeon Bay Braving Church. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Radio stations of DoorCountyDailyNews.com.